make it a host, Tash. Mm -hmm. So changing host. You should have the time, as they say. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, I should, if I am the host, I should be able to say speaker view. And then how do I share my, oh, share screen. <coughs> okay, share screen. And how do I say desktop? Yeah, desktop one. Okay. Let me know if you guys see it. I see it. Good. Excellent. Um, okay, how do I, this thing is blocking my, how do I make it uh, like slide up and not block anything? Drag it out of the way or do, does it have, a, we don't see it. So does it have a pin in it to, to, to hide it? Okay. I just took it up to the screen above. So that's good. That's good. All right. Uh, well, welcome guys uh, and gals. Uh, my name is Jitesh. Doshi. Um, in the days before COVID, I used to roam the streets of uh, Jacksonville, <laughs> but I guess nowadays we don't do that. Um, I am. Um, I, I run a, a business here in Jacksonville. It's called Springfire. And uh, speaking of YouTube channels, uh, I, my, I have a YouTube channel on which I have more than couple, two dozen uh, short videos, and that is also called uh, Spinspire. So if you go to, I'm just gonna, if you can see my screen, just go to youtube.com slash Spinspire, and you'll see my channel. And there are, uh, I'm going to put a link to that here in chat. So, so yeah, uh, and we will talk about Swell, of course. So uh, that's my video speaking, not me. So here's the link to my channel. And uh, there are, uh, there's a long playlist. There's a specific play playlist called Swell Jazz Series. And there are lots of them. Uh, and then generally, so there are 26 videos in that series. So you can, you can watch all of them. Uh, two specifically that I want to draw your attention to is why learn Svelte and how to learn Svelte. So those are the two I would uh, recommend uh, you to start with, why learn Svelte and how to learn Svelte. And then the rest of them you can go in any order. Okay. All right. So that's all I wanted to say about that. So let's talk about what is Svelte, why we should learn it, et cetera, et cetera. But before that, I wanted to just uh, see who all we have in the uh, in the uh, in the room, as they say. Uh, so we have uh, David and Brady. Good to meet you. And um, of course, I I know um, <laughs> uh, Josh is sitting actually close by. Uh, Gary, Rohit, and I'm not sure. If there is another name, uh, and Jyoti, I know him, uh, Kesha, uh, Kesha or Kesha, and then there are two other people whose names are not showing up. So I would generally uh, recommend uh, everybody if you can. I mean, it would be nice if you guys can turn on the webcam. It's kind of nice to see the reactions of people. And the interaction goes better, of course. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Uh, and. Uh, Anybody, has anybody here actually used Svelte, even for a toy project? No. Never. Okay, look, uh, Josh has, so that's good. Um, all right, so um, Svelte is basically an alternative to React and Vue and Angular. That's basically the best way to describe it, but it takes a very different approach. It takes a compiler approach instead of a runtime library approach. And that has many consequences. So uh, let me just go to, um, go back to that. Uh, I have a presentation. Uh, I'm not going to play that presentation. A video has been recorded, uh, a recorded video. I'm not going to play that, but link to it is a Google presentation, which is why learn Svelte. And uh, if I go to videos, And one of them is why, 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 why. 
Okay, why learn Swift? This one, yeah. So if I open that again, I'm not going to play this, but I am. There is a. It, it links to a Google presentation that that is what I'm interested in. Um. So, this one. Gosh, everything gets slower when once you get on Zoom. Zoom slows everything down. So here. So this is the presentation I was interested in. If you go to the Weil and Svelte um, YouTube video, it links to a Google presentation, and this is that. It's, it's of course public. So, and there are many reasons, business justification, technical justification, personal reasons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I recommend you to actually uh, uh, look at it. There's also another one uh, next to it called How to Learn Svelte. And that one also I would recommend you take a look at. Okay, but of course this is not a pre-recorded presentation. This is a live presentation. So why why should we go and play some some of those? Uh, so let's not uh, any pre-recorded doesn't make sense. So let's uh, let's start, uh, take a look at twelve. What it can do. Okay. So first of all we will go to twelve and there is a repo there. So first, I mean, if you see my uh, How to Learn Swelt video, you will see that I re referenced this tutorial. There is a tutorial. You should uh, go through the tutorial. It takes, I mean, and I, I, in my video and in my presentation, I also sp specify which ones you can skip initially when you're doing it. So if you follow that roadmap, it will take you three, four hours total to learn Swelt. Okay. Um, because there are some things that you don't need in the beginning, you can skip that, and and that this will take about three hours, it took me three hours, even though I was completely uninitiated. Okay, now, but right now for this demo, I'm going to use the REPL. Okay, so REPL is very simple. By the way, feel free to interrupt at any time. I would l love interruptions. Okay, so mm, this. So REPL basically uh, allows you to enter Svelte code and, and show you the output in real time. So for more advanced stuff, you cannot do it. It's not advisable to do it here. Mm, it's better to simply um, do it in VS Code or some, some such ID. So this is the simplest Hello World program. As you can see, and let me make this bigger. Oops, much smaller, bigger. Can you see it? Everybody can see it? Okay, good. So, uh, a Svelte program, this is app.svelte, and a Svelte program has an extension .svelte. Uh, sorry, I should say a Svelte component, not program. Svelte component is packaged as a .svelte file, and it has three parts. It has script, it has a HTML, and it can also have style. And the styles would be like angle brackets, style like this and and you can put some some style we'll, we'll look at it. so if you if you give this a class who then you can say dot who is color red and that makes it red so but keep in mind all style uh, styling is scoped meaning to say if you have dot foo uh, a class elsewhere in outside of this component, it will not be affected. So all styling is lo local. Well, not all. It is possible to make you. It is possible for you to create global styling, but then you will have to actually specifically say global something, global dev, uh, and, and then you would have to do it this way. So that's how you make global styling inside a component. But most of the time, you don't want to do that. So. Just keep that in mind. All styling by default is local. So you have JavaScript, you have style, CSS, and you have HTML. This is the reason why I say Svelte is so easy to learn. You already know these three things, okay? And you, uh, by the time you are done with this, hopefully you will be convinced that there is very, very little, a little bit, but you have to learn more on top of that, not much. Which is a, a big contrast against things like Angular or React, even Vue, I would say, because you have to learn a whole bunch of new things. Now, why is this simple? You set a variable, 
assign it a value. So use that variable in curly braces in your HTML. What could be simpler than that? But you might say, hey, but data is come on. Slice is not that simple. Um, usually we need to, these variables are dynamic, they change. So how should we handle that? So, so let's do that. Let's make these variables dynamic. Oops, sorry. Uh, let me undo that. Yeah. So let's get rid of this classroom. So what if this variable was changing? Let's change it. Uh, let me create a button. Button change name. That's the name of the button. That's the value of the title of the button. And if on this clicking this button, we can trigger a handler by saying on colon click. I like this naming convention over React. In React, it is on capital C click. This one is very clear. Everything is lowercase. Uh, seems to follow the spirit of HTML. So this obviously is not HTML syntax. This is an enhancement to the HTML syntax. And then you give it a handler. I will say change name. That's the name of the function. So you just give it the name of the function and here in, the, in this function, I say change name. And in there, um, I will change name to, you know, universe. All right, so at this point, if you are a React developer, you will be thinking, really, you can do that? You can just assign a new value to a variable? In fact, you can. I click. OK, uh, let me just make a trivial change for the end. So this is back to every time I make a change, it, uh, it remounts, it recompiles and remounts. Let me do this again. So here's the button that has a handler. And in the handler, I am simply reassigning a new value to a variable. It used to be world, now it's universe. So as soon as I click change name, it changes. This should delight you. Because there is no set state. There is no use state. There is no, there is definitely no um, a reducer or action creator or anything like that going on. This is now this is obviously local state, and we will talk about global state also. But this is local state, and this is pretty good. Now let me get more interest. Uh, let me do something more interesting than that. Why? What if uh, there was an input box? So input, and then let's give it a placeholder type name here and and if you wanted want to bind two way binding the value of this input box to name then you do this and now this thing this name variable that has an initial value of world could be changed to change name uh, is bound in several different places if i hit change name this world will become universe in both the, both of these places. So it's literally bound everywhere. And now if I start typing here, J, I, T, E, S, H, so on every keystroke. So what is happening is um, this bind value is a bidirectional bi binding. If name changes, then the input box changed like this. And if the input box, if you start typing into the in in input, uh, box, then it changes the variable and that wherever it is used. Now, this you need to focus on this a little bit because I'm trying to uh, convey something here that Swell is truly reactive. The React, the framework that, that has reactive in its name, is not reactive because you have to you have to you have to inform the framework that I change something through set state or use state or something like that, right? You don't have to do that to, uh, to Svelte. Svelte is a compiler. At compile time, what is, what, what is really happening is every time something someone assigns to name here, 
So it, it detects that you're assigning to name or it detects that you have a two way bound value here. And in this case, it detects that you're reading name. So the compiler, um, you know, parses all these situations and it attaches, it injects some code in all of those places. You can actually see what code it injects by just clicking on this JS output. But we won't go over there. That, but it's very small. It's a one-liner code that it injects and says, okay, you are assigning a value to universe and it converts, think of it like it, it internally basically says that state name equal to universe, something like that around along those lines, but but, it, but this is easy for local state. This kind of a thing is, you might think of it as a parlor trick or, you know, it's nice, but you know, it's all right. But no, it, this becomes very, very important if you had a large uh, form, for example, in, in, in things like React, it's very common for people to, um, to create large, um, to use large frameworks just to manage a form. So let me show you an example. So imagine if you had a um, customer object. And in that customer object, you had all kinds of things like, uh, I'm just going to, just to keep my life simple, I'm going to print uh, customer as JSON data, okay? So I just say um, JSON dot stringy pi customer. So this way it shows, okay. And then let's, okay. So this is, this will represent the customer. So imagine if you had a form, form, and um, you have input bind, so in React, imagine what you would be doing, but here I'm, I'm just going to do customer dot name. So, and then this is, so let's put a placeholder. Customer name. Okay, let's say input bind value. Like this, you can keep going. So let's say um, customer dot email placeholder customer. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I mean, two of these will suffice for an for example. And then you say customer name is Jitesh Doshi, email is Jitesh at inspire dot com. Does that does that delight you? I mean, the, the, you see the, the significance of this? Now try doing this in React. <laughs> All right, so this is, this is the power of a, a compiler. So this is, this is a result of, uh, of Svelte being compiler driven. Everything is much easier. You will notice when you write very large Svelte applications also, you will realize there's, there's very little code. There's hardly any code. This is, this is total code. And then when you are ready to actually submit it, Okay, let's submit it. So I'm in button, uh, save, let's say. You would have a save button and on form you would say on submit, right? And it'll say submit handler, let's say. Now in the real world, you'd probably be doing some Ajax there, but let's just see what how this works. And for purposes of this demo, I'll just say console log, right? Um, right, okay. So let's see what, what this is. I say git page, git page at inspire. Com. And if I now hit, let me, that's your object. Nothing could be simpler than that. So, and this is what you would be posting. I mean, if, if you had a, an API, you would just say fetch, you know, 
method equal to post whatever i mean you know what uh, and then then you would be giving uh, data equal to customer something like that so you will as a, as a result uh, the code for swelt is very very small amount of code because it, in the amount of learning that you have to do for swelt is also very minimal so let me show you a little example so here is Wait, not this. Okay, hold on. Yes, so this is my uh, little Firebase example. Mm, that was okay. Give me one second. Uh, all right, before I get go to Firebase, yeah, let me do a simpler example. Actually, simpler than that. A little bit of fun. Um, Give me a second. I, I need to bring this down. How do I unmaximize this? Uh, it's not letting me unmaximize. Uh, let me try. How the heck do I get this out of here? Okay, I'll just do this. I'm not sure. Does anybody know? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. This will, this will work. Um, okay, so if I go to localhost 5000. So now, it, this time, earlier I was running that in, in a REPL, but now I'm running it on my machine. Okay, so this is, this is what, what, I, what I did was, I'll just explain to you what I did. I basically go to swell.dev, which is here, and you write some code and you can simply hit this button here, download zip file. And if you do that, it gives you a complete app. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. That's not exactly how I do it, but we'll get to it. Um, but, so here it is. Let me just show you the structure of this project first. Hmm. The structure of the project is very simple. There's a package.json in which everything is a dev dependency. You will notice that everything is a dev, dev dependency. In fact, this one dependency that is not dev is wrong. Should have been dev dependency. Let me. Everything is a dev dependency. Okay. Be because well, it is a compiler, it's not a runtime library. So everything is a dev dependency and then um, there is this script dev. You, by the way, Swell's uh, preferred um, bundler is rollup, so that's okay. You don't have to worry about any of those things. You just run run the dev, and that is what I have running here. And this is the okay. Now the entry point in a, of a Swell program is whatever you want it to be. Usually main.js. So here there is main. Um, I am creating an app instance which is app.swell. And then I tell where to mount it in document.body and it will actually, uh, so if you look at the view source, there is, this, this is all there is. So I have an empty body and we are targeting document.body. So app as a component ends up in document.body. So, and here's the app. And this is a very simple, app, but it's actually very powerful. So this is, I am using this joke API called um, um, Chuck Norris joke API. You just, and what I do is I have a very simple function, fetch joke. It's an async function. It awaits on fetch from this URL. This fetch is a random joke. And then, so you got the response, you parse it as JSON, which you also you await on. And then after all, everything is done, you just say JSON, or whatever you get. Let me just show you what, what you get in here. And uh, paste. So here it is, uh, type success, value is equal to something, and then ID. And then here's the joke. The joke has a uh, one-liner. Technology knows Victoria's secret. So that kind of, a, it, these are a little bit 
silly jokes, funny jokes. But anyway, so we fetch that, and all we are doing is assigning a local variable, and that local variable is displayed. And every time you you overwrite and reassign this local variable um, to Ajax, you get a joke. Technologist did not lose his virginity or whatever. So it's such another joke, another joke. Every time I'm clicking that, it's executing an Ajax request. After the Ajax request is finished, it reassigns a new value to this variable, and you get the the variable. So technologist doesn't see dead people; he makes people dead. So Very well, true. the point is, uh, the now. The, most of this code is just fetch code. There is only one line of these. These two are basically you are displaying a variable value and then you are you have an on click. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, better than that. Let me terminate this. I'm going to stop this one. Okay, and instead go to sorry. This other one. Here, oops, not this one. Is it this one? Yeah, it is this one. Sorry, never mind. So this is my Firebase demo, and let me just show you what it does before I get into the specifics. And this is where global state. I, I want to demo you global state, shared state, and you'll see what it, how how delightful that is. So it just finished compiling, and now it's running on port five thousand. So I reload. And there it is. Uh, the, the top part of it is just boilerplate. I, I put that on all my applications. By the way, Svelte supports uh, TypeScript, so you can write your code in TypeScript. In fact, that's what I have done here. And uh, you will see that if you want to write your, uh, remember, Svelte components are basically script tag, like that, style. And then any amount of HTML. So if your script has lang equal to ts in it, then it can be written in TypeScript, which is what I have here. Although I'm not using some types, I should have been better about it. But here's the thing: I have a a, a little utility file called Firebase, and from where I'm selecting Firebase, and um, actually I'm not even using Firebase, am I? Yeah, I'm not using it, so I can get rid of that. So I'm, I have a, an exported function called collection. You give it the name of the collection and you got this object. This object is a store. And once, when something is a store, you will notice I'm using to-dos over here at the bottom as dollar to-dos. This is another um, of the Svelte magic where you, you have um, something called store a store is basically a, an object that um, not only you can share between components, it's global. I mean, as long as you, have, you can have a reference to it, you can share it. But more importantly, you can be reactive to it. That's the, so if dollars, if to, to do objects changed in any way, the value of the store changed in any way, this entire template would re, repaint itself. Now, uh, so if you had, imagine if you had another component which was modifying the value of the store, this would keep repainting. So that's the other thing about, about Svelte. Svelte does not have virtual DOM. It simply surgically modifies DOM. So, um, so, so every time uh, to do changes, this for each loop will rerun. So let me, now what is behind the to do's? To do is coming as a collection from Firebase. And here's my Firebase. I mean, if I, this is my code. This is pretty short amount of code, right? I just, so I'm creating a store, a writable store. And the collection, the Firebase collection is represented by the store. I cannot get into all the, uh, you know, everything about the store. But the point is, this store is synchronized with Firebase data bi-directionally, which means if uh, the data changes, the store automatically changes. And I can prove it to you in a second. So let me just delete 
these things. It's actually, see, this is my Firebase. And in, if, if I look at this um, to-dos collection, there are two of these. And uh, if I click on that, you see there's three. And uh, if I go back to to-dos and I click this one, this is called two. Three and two are in there. And as you can see, this is three and two. Let me delete all of them. Now, if I come back here, Firebase, of course, has all of them deleted. It's empty. I type a new to do, say, learn 12. I hit save, and it's actually inserting in Firebase. Learn 12, right? And completed is off. Now, the minute I check this checkbox, uh, the, it went strike through because that's a class that I've added, but more importantly, completed became true here. This is in Firebase. Now, this is not one way, this is two way. Imagine if I inject a new uh, record, if through some other application, completely unrelated application, you added a new document here. And let's add a new document. Document ID, I'll leave, sorry, one second. One, oh. Needs a little, yeah, auto ID, make it auto ID. And then I say title is um, learn Deno. By the way, I'm very much interested in Deno also. So I say that's one of them. And I add, um, say completed is true. Boolean, true. So as you can see, I'm manipulating Firebase, right? So I, I hit save, and back in my application, I already have learned demo with check, you know, completed. So the point is, this is happening. I obviously did not call, um, uh, reload this page, and you will notice that there is nothing in this app touch world which says, uh, oh, listen for changes in dollar to do. That's because it is a store and that store is synchronized with this collection in this fire index or TS in Firebase folder. So when I created store, I said to do is a collection from my Firebase database and name of the collection is to do. And from that point onward, anything that happens to that Firebase database, it gets automatically shown here. So, this makes your, your applications very simple and very, you know, um, very for the opposite of verbose, I guess, percent, yeah, that. Um, which means fewer bugs, your application surface area is much far smaller. So other than that, I mean, I am slowly running out of things to say because what you saw, pretty much what you have to learn about as well. If you learn stores and- Josh, you, how, how do you do yeah. composition where you create a component and then you consume that component in, um, I don't know if you've got an example, but, but you know, I'm interested in creating like a sub component with capability uh, or behavior and then uh, bi-directionally uh, uh, binding that in a, in a parent in a parent component, right? Like, or so, good, good, very good question. So let me, let me do something very quickly. I'm just going to make a copy of this app touch, right? Okay. So, because I'm going to get it. So let's get the whole thing. I'm going to show you um, how do you, uh, so con composition is, is actually pretty sweet. So Svelte has this concept of, um, what is it called? Um, so I'm just going to remove everything from it. Okay. So I just saved it. Our app is completely empty. But nothing in there. Okay. All right. Let's get, get back to the. We'll, we'll. So your question was about composition. So there is some. Uh, so Swell has the concept of slots. Let's let's create a, a tab group. How about that tab group with, with tabs, right? So imagine I create a folder called tabs, and then in there there is a tab group dot Swell. Okay, so this is a, a component. We'll, we'll put some stuff in it, but first let's import that. 
So import tab group from dot slash tabs slash tab group dot swell. Okay, so you got tab group. Now let's put the tab group in here. Tab group. Okay. Now tab group can have, let's say it has some content. Let's call it tab dot dot dot. Okay. At this point, you will see nothing. Why? Because tab group ignores its content, its children. So that's not nice. It's not nice to ignore your children. So all you have to do is you can say, surrender my children, surrender my default slot. So basically your children or your child content is your default slot. So here I have, I'm rendering the slot. But usually the whole reason why you're doing this, you usually want to wrap things in something. So let's say div.tab is, is a class, right? And now, as soon as I save that, I see tab start, dot, dot. So that's the beginning of tab. So let's now actually give it real tabs. So we will say tab, and this will be tab one. Oops, not tab. <laughs> All right, and then let's say just for the sake of realisticness. Now we have to create an, another component called tab. Let's do that. So new file, tab dot twelve, and it it does pretty much the same thing. It renders its default slot and uh, div dot tab single singular of course. So it's going to render its default slot. And now if I save it, I should, wait. So is it going to show anything? You have, so to, tab import, group. You have to import tab, I think. Ha, ah, sorry, sorry, yes, you're right. You are right. So I import tab from tab dot All right, so I save that and yeah, whenever Zoom is running, okay, yeah, now you got two. So what is happening is tab group has two children. Tab, what does tab group do? It simply renders the slot. And then tab, it does the same thing, it renders the slot, right? Now, you, let's keep going. Obviously, you will need tab bodies, right? So tab content, let's call it. And this is the content of tab one and another one content of tab two. So if I now go to tab, uh, yeah, I need to create, right? Yeah, so I create a new file for tab content. That's 12, right? And it does pretty much the same thing. This guy doesn't even put it in a, in a wrapper, no wrapper, and you'll see why. Uh, so th this, it simply renders slot, nothing more than that. It's kind of almost silly, but uh, we'll, we'll see why. So um, let us, so tab group is this. Let us- You gotta import tab content. Correct, yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, tab content. Tab content, okay. So once you do that, you should see content of tab one and content of tab two. Simple. Obviously, a real tabs will show only one content, not all of them, so let's fix that. So this is where we will create a store, but how will we share the store? Now, you could create a global, global variable and store the store in that global variable. This is the kind of things that people in React do. But, uh, I mean, not always, but Sometimes it is. We can do something better, which is store it in a context. A context is a is a is a variable that is stored only between parent and children. That's what we will do. So if I go to tab group, I can create and I just say script and I create um, 
import from Swell, set context, and you give it a name. Set context is basically setting the value of, of, a, of a context variable. Now, so this will be active tab. And active tab, its initial value, whatever you want to set it, that will be our store. So uh, let's import the store. Let's create a store from Swelt store. And we will import writable. So writable stores are basically something you can, they're bi-directional, you can write to them. So I say const uh, active, or let's just call it store is equal to writable. And its initial value is undefined. So nothing is active actually which of course we can change. And let's store the store in there. That's it. So once you do this, let's save this. You can go to the other uh, like tab itself. And because tab is a child of, of a tab group, it can receive context. So instead of set, these guys will be, guys will be getting context. So let's get context. And it doesn't need to import writable. And it just says, now when this guy comes, he says, my store is equal to get context active tab. And you obviously it doesn't have to provide value. So these are children, all children will receive the, child, uh, the, the context. Um, and it just has to know the same name, that's all. Now we can say, I am an active tab. Let's do this. Um, well, well, we'll do that later, uh, the active tab, tab part of it. But uh, let's uh, put these tabs in, in a row rather than, you know, so we just say style um, tab. If you are of type tab, uh, class tab, then you, your display is inline block. That way they show up in a single row and not two. So once you do that, you see one, two, like that, together. But of course now they are also all showing up within the same same div, which means tab group needs to do something. Tab group needs to, so, so it's rendered its plot, all of them together. What is happening is tabs and tab content are all being mixed up. So the solution is you create two uh, slots instead of one. Meaning to say, let's just put a span and the span ha has a, has a, you give you say this is a slot. This is not the default slot. It is a new slot, and it has a special name called tab. And you move these two tabs inside that. And the rest of this is also in the slot, but it, this is the default slot. So now, we, when you go back to tab group, you say let me re render my slot named tab here. And then I render my default slot, which is which has no name outside. And that I wrap in something called tab content class. Once you do that, you will see. So these two tabs are showing up at the top. Content is showing up at the bottom. So this is the tab and this is the tab content, but it, it is still showing all the, all the content. It's very easy how to hide the one that is not active. All you have to do, do is go, I'll duplicate this code. Uh, just like I got this code, I simply come back here and say, now you got the store and I say, if, if uh, dollar store, is equal to my ID. So you can give it, if dollar store is equal to my ID, then show me. So this pound sign if is a is special syntax, basically it's conditional. And keep in mind, it doesn't just hide the slot, it simply doesn't even render it, it's unrendered, unmounted. So obviously ID is unrecognized, so we have to create a, a prop. In React, you would think of this as a prop. So, and it uses a special keyword, uh, export, export, let ID. 
all you have to do is make sure that the id is same between the tab and the tab uh, content so i gave both of them this id and now i go to the uh, app and say just make sure that they all have the same id id is equal to let's say 1 and this id is equal to 2 make sure you have the same id id is equal to 1 doesn't have to be called id you could call it key for example you could call it anything you want uh, let's call it id since we started saying that so 2 now these ids are matching so let's save this this guy says that id is not valid uh, why is that let me see oh because because i used typescript that's why it it doesn't like that that's okay uh, let's not worry about that so now as you can see when tab content disappeared it disappeared because oops sorry the tab content disappeared because i have said only if the store is equal to my id nobody is setting it so let's go to tab and say when a tab, uh, uh, when you click on the my, me the tab so on click simple you just say dollar store is equal to my id store my make my id active so as soon as i do, do that from this point if i click one it says content of tab 1 so i click 2 shows content of tab 2 this is obviously not very pretty to look at so we could just say hey each tab has a padding of 1 em and it has a border of a solid black 2 pixel so hmm, wait what happened here oh yeah so one and two okay so this is good we can further say if you are active which means uh when when they are active so you can assign uh, a class conditionally class colon active when dollar store is equal to my id the value of store is equal to my id then i am active we just said dot tab dot active in that situation color the foreground color is white and background color let's make it black spell spell active correctly in your class name on 13 oh thank you thank you yeah thank you i will yep so i save that and now neither of them is active i click one it becomes active i click two this one becomes active and now the only thing left to do is uh make a default one active so what if tab group said that uh, it had something like called active id or active tab equal to let's say two just for the sake of uh, so it doesn't have that such a thing so we will we'll say let's give it an export let which is a prop active tab is an is a prop that you will receive and now when you create the store you just say active tab whatever was passed in that as active tab make it active so now two is active right no two is not active my bad did i save it properly two should be active okay it didn't quite work the active tab is the initial value and here is active tab equal to 2 export let active tab active tab is the initial value and it should have shown 2 let me check why hmm that's strange isn't it so here's a debugging technique you basically can say oh everything inside um inside the html is reactive but if you want to have javascript code that is reactive you prefix it with this label called dollar sign colon and now you can just say every time dollar store changes 
the value of stored changes please print it and this will it will this line will get repeated every time it it changes so let me just now go into the console hey jitesh can you put a breakpoint yes yes we can oh there was a there was an a, a, a tab group created without expected prop active tab oh so it didn't didn't even see the active tab why is that what is this did i misspell this this looked right to me oh i, I haven't saved uh, uh, this is unsaved that's why okay that's why boom oh yeah so you were saying about uh, uh, oh by the way look store is 2 the minute i click on this one store is 1 i click on this one so this is how you create uh, you know reactive statement these are these are these are reactive statements they will react to whenever whenever and by the way this is like uh, this is like um, use effect use effect in in react but in use effect you have to give it an array of variables that that might change right not so in 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 swelt swelt is a compiler it knows what variable you are changing and what variable you are you are depending upon so so it just it is automatically uh, uh, this is like saying use effect array having depends on store so so yes now back to uh, jyoti your question can we put a breakpoint yes we can let me show you um with the sources yeah so i could say i could say tab dot well yes so there is tab it's very small screen sorry but so i could say put a breakpoint every time uh, the this thing on click is executing right so i put a breakpoint here uh wait Mm, it's not actually doing that. Why? I'm surprised because it does. Uh, oh yes, I know, I know why. Do you have to go to the JavaScript? No, the problem is there are two, and I do not know why, but there are two of these. I have to always select the second one. Then it becomes. See? Okay. All right. Cool. It's always that wise. So now every time you. i cannot put a breakpoint here because there isn't a proper um, proper function there right but if i separated that into a function but any case i could i could just put a breakpoint here and get context and so when i reload cool thank you it stops there so if i had a I had a longer function I, i would be able to do that but here this is not okay so um now of course uh, if the tab group um tab group where is that yeah so it should probably uh, put a like we should style it again to make it look like a tab so you say whatever the uh, the tabs container is make it a border bottom solid black to pixel if you do that so see what i mean by that so you got um b- bottom and now in the in the so since we have double double um, borders we can just say border bottom in the tab itself is none so if you do that now they they look like real tabs right so um so where you asked about uh, composition is this i mean does that answer the composition question in a sense so it the composition is basically through slot and yeah, you, I, I, no i love it that was an awesome um, awesome demo i mean we got three <laughs> three sub components and uh, it's pretty straightforward you just import them and use them um yeah and and look at where the co- what is the code look at the, where is the code style of course style is style you yeah. don't count that as code right this is code and this is code yeah that's it that tab tab group is well there's some code where you are creating i mean the console log doesn't count so 
So you create a context, you create a, a store, you set it as a context, and th that makes it shareable across the parent-child hierarchy. Yeah. And that's the code. Is, so is that also, suppose you had a, um, a subcomponent that, uh, let's just say it was a, an input box, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that was styled in an appropriate way, had a placeholder, a float label, for, for example, <laughs> That when you put the, uh, you know, when you put the cursor in the text box, that the placeholder would float above the the box and become a label of the, you know, vertical label. Mm -hmm. I could see making a subcomponent for that, but I want that subcomponent to be able to inform, uh, double bind, right, mm -hmm. uh, two-way binding to my parent, so that my parent can use the same binding mechanisms to. Um, you know, to get the value of the child when the child changed and, and vice versa, obviously from the parent. Like to... Excellent, excellent point. And the answer is yes, very much so. Um, so anything that, uh, that you, any exported property of any prop of child can be bound, two-way bound. So, um, all right, let's say tab group. Although it has access to um, it has access to the writable, I'm just trying to think of um, what's the best way to um, let's say the app. Yeah, that's a good way. Let's say app wanted. You remember, app does not have access to your active tab. But it wanted access. It's it's as simple as this. Let X to tab and bind active tab. You don't even have to say active tab twice. You can say it like this, or or the short shorthand is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch this. And then, if you want to see every time it changes, let's do a reactive declaration console.log active tab is equal to whatever the active tab is. So, here the app component is doing two way binding with one of the properties. If I save this to the console, This is the initial value. This is the first time. And if I click on this, oh, see, this is not it's not working. Hold on. Mm, let me see. Why? Do we have to go to tab group and, and somehow export active tab as a? It's already. No, no, it is already exported. You're right. Yeah. You are on the right we'll track. Let's say it's hard coded to two. No, no, no. It's the initial value only. But it's, but it's bound. Okay. But it's bound. Yeah, yeah. So all, all that is missing is we are not reacting to store value changing. That's all we have to do. So therefore we say reactive statement active tab is equal to dollar store. That's, so now you are modifying your own prop every time store changes. So save this. And now, if I click this, see, mm -hmm. that was because because no one was the tab group was not modifying the value. It was just taking the initial value and never going back to it and updating it. With this, you just updated it. So now you click around, and every time you click around, it's doing that. So yes, uh, I mean I hope you guys are excited. You. Uh, don't get me wrong, I have been doing React development for three, four years now. And in fact, my, one of my, a couple of my major projects are in React. So I know React pretty well, but it is, it doesn't compare. It just doesn't compare to how little code I have to do. And the power, like the expressiveness is very impressive. You, you, you can see it yourself, right? 
Yes. Yeah, it's it's a lot it's a lot more concise even uh, than 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 Angular as well. Um, what about the stuff you get with React, like time capsule and being able to, you know what I mean, uh, see changes over time? It has the maturity of Svelte grown to you know to see the add-ons and uh, I guess the um, the writable stores that actually do time tracking. Yeah. So here's the thing. That comes from Redux, not from React, right? And you can use Redux with, with uh, Swell if you want to. All you have to do is um, wrap your Redux stores in Swell store. And I show, show Swell stores are, are ridiculously easy to, to create. I mean, the dollar sign is, uh, with dollar sign you are subscribing to read it. But if you wanted to update it, like update a store, you would say, store dot set okay so set to whatever whatever value you want to want to set to or if you wanted to update after reading the value of itself from the current value you can say store dot update and then you give it a call back saying current value and then the new val return the new value so you can say current val plus one less i mean some so so the thing is now replace what you would be doing is you would be uh, you would be put, putting this kind of a uh, uh, code inside your um, Redux reducers. So your reducers. So, will, mm -hmm. I was just going to ask uh, a couple of quick questions, uh, Jitesh. Sure. Um, uh, you did a presentation for us back in February on uh, Sapper, uh, along mm -hmm. with this. And uh, back then, I'm not sure this is something they've addressed in uh, six months since the last time you presented this, um, uh, was that there are some edge cases where there are some things you could do in Angular and React that weren't, you didn't have that capability in, um, in uh, Svelte, and, uh, or at least, at least in Latin Sapper. And um, I forget what those were. I was just going to see if you could refresh my memory about mm -hmm. what exactly those those features that are, and whether or not uh, they're, they're in they're actually in Sapper now. Mm -hmm. So, no, I, I I myself don't remember, but I don't think there is anything. There is nothing really. Uh, there is one thing that is that is a little harder to do in Swift, which is. Uh, in Svelte, there is one component per file that becomes, that can be seen as a limitation. So you end up with, if you have lots and lots of components, you end up, end up with lots and lots of files. But let me address that concern because did you notice how I have a folder called tab and it has these? Yes. So the right way to do that, instead of, instead of importing everything in app dot you know one one by one at a time like this the, the, the everything has a proper technique so the right way is put index.js in your folder and say export default as mm, tab from Uh, if you do it like this hmm, and do all of all three of them tab content so yes you still have all this, this many files but so tab content tab group. Okay, so you save this. Now, back in app dot twelve, you you don't have to do multiple imports like this. You just say import tab group and tab and nice. tab content. So, nice. And it works just fine. Okay. Okay. Well, one one more question, um, and that has to do with uh, uh, one of the features in Vue that I like is uh, 
you have the capability of doing uh, essentially progressive enhancement where you can do maybe you just have like one widget you want to do that requires some type of interactivity where it makes sense to use view but the rest of your web page essentially is static and so you can just kind of add view as you need it you can do you know uh, a completely uh, a complete spa based application if you want to or you can just do one little thing and I was curious uh, uh, if you're just trying to do like a, a quick little widget or something that like handles like uh, you know um, uh, kind of like live search results or something like that and like one little component and stuff like that um, uh, what how would you use uh, Svelte to do that or does it make sense to use uh, Svelte to do something small like that absolutely it does so uh, Svelte compiles to a, a bundle okay JavaScript so if you wanted to do that you would basically um, if you see how this is I mean the kind of black magic that you we are all used to in in react you don't have that in in Svelte. Uh, let me just show you I'll just, what i mean is in react <laughs> your index.html has you know black magic markers or uh, containers right mine doesn't mine simply has bundle.js and this bundle.js came from the, the roll-up compiler, the bundler. So, to answer your question, what you would do is, your main dot, you, you would have uh, multiple bundles. Let's say bundle foo.js, and you may have, let's say, let's say you have two, two spelled apps, bundle foo.js and bundle bar.js, and what you would do is, in your main, So one of them, let's say one of them is it targets ID foo and the other one targets ID bar or something like that. Hmm. So you just say, or, or, or better yet, <laughs> you can be better than that. You can say data uh, target equals foo. Find yourself ID foo and then data target is equal this goes to sorry the other way around this is foo and the other is bar so you just have you just give yourself a div foo and then similarly div bar so these will be two completely separate and independent independent um, swell taps you can I mean, you can even compile them and import them from different directories somewhere. And then in, in the main, uh, in, in the main.js, you would say, instead of a targeting document body, you would say, you know, um, document start query selector, whatever the, the value of, uh, data target is okay and you of course have to get the data target somehow right, right. you get that through uh, by by querying the, the script itself right so this way you can put you can put any number of little swelt apps inside a single html page you can comp compile multiple apps. By the way, Rollup is, is a very powerful uh, bundler. It, 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 can, it can compile an array of applications with very similar structures. And they will, it will be producing bundle two and bun bundle bar. Now I haven't got, got I did not even mention Tapper, uh, but um, David did. But Tapper is basically a, these, it's a client and server side com combo of a framework. So meaning this is Sapper is a Node.js and Svelte framework. So Node.js is server side, Svelte would be client side. And by the way, it's, Svelte is, is all this stuff about isomorphic. Svelte has been doing that for ages. I mean, it doesn't even talk about it much. So on the server side, it treats, because it doesn't do virtual DOM, it, it generates, it treats HTML as, as strings. It generates HTML strings on the server side. On the client side, 
it uh, it treats html in terms of dom so it knows the difference you know that i'm i'm I, when it's compiling in when it's running inside node js it behaves one way when it's running inside the browser it behaves slightly differently but it but the end result is same which means all your client side um, programs are readily uh, runnable on the server side you were going to say something uh, david no no that uh, answers my question thank you very much mm -hmm. so yeah i would recommend you guys to uh, check out swelt and also sapper sapper basically it puts swelt on steroids because it mm, if you heard of nextjs then sapper is nextjs for swelt mm, where it comes with a router the router is client side and server side router meaning to say when you click around on an internal link it is do it is doing that you know in a single page application mode spa mode while if you if you force a full page reload it still works because at that point it does server side rendering and, and gets you the page anyways and from that point onwards you start clicking around and and it's all client side so pretty pretty powerful um i don't think we have um, Show, 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 show me more about Rollup. Uh, this is the first I heard about Rollup. It sounds like it's the new Webpack. Yes, I, it's actually better than Webpack, much better. So, Rollup is basically uh, this is rollup.config.js. You run it. You can run Rollup either through command line or or otherwise by simply you can just say Rollup minus c as in use a config file which defaults to rollup dot config dot js but it could be you could, you could give it a different one and then you or you can say rollup watch which which is what so let me control c this because the same thing is already being done in my package dot json mm, right there. yep okay so now so what is rollup npm run dev and You'll get mm -hmm. rollup. Yep. Yes. Now the rollup is already is using rollup dot config dot js for its configuration. The only thing you have to export from rollup is an is a configuration object, <clears throat> and no, rollup will do the rest. It wants to know the this entry point. It wants to know what the output will be. Output can be um, I I S E meaning to say, you know, immediately info. the function expression or it could be also um module no not module what is it called mm, yeah esm es6 module so that the name i don't think name matters and this is output file name so yes this what i would do, say it's like you have you know package main is the entry point you are getting that from so i would probably generate this as I could do this. Does it do tree shaking for you and everything? Yeah, yes, it does. It does. It certainly so, looks easier to configure than a, a webpack. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it definitely is. And oh, by the way, I have a, a roll-up tutorial on my YouTube channel. It it goes line by line. It, it doesn't use any boilerplate. It, it writes from scratch. anyway so you, you would do something like this and and now in so what you should do is <clears throat> i think line 16 for, is it line 16 i think you is that right format module or did you mean uh, iife on yeah, 16 yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. iife sorry yep there you so, go okay what i'm saying is you could uh, the the roll up The rollup config is simply an object that's all it is you see it's an object from big and you have an array of plugins so these are all the plugins and there are many of them but if you had a complex uh, build system you would simply say turn this into an array so there Just create an array of objects. Yeah, 
Yeah, you, and obviously nobody should be creating it like this. They should be writing a function to, to create that array of objects. Mm -hmm. And so I would say create config and it it returns it will return an object of config whatever it goes in here and this this will be params param one param two whatever the parameters are once you are done that you just say export default array of objects mm -hmm. and that will be create config with parameter one, one and two. I see, I see, yep. Mm -hmm. And then you can you can just do, keep doing this, right? Or better yet, th that's not really the, the, the way I would do it. I would do it, <clears throat> okay? I have, a, a, I have an array of parameters. Array mm -hmm. of objects. And you put that in a loop. <laughs> and then say map. Yep. Map. You're right, and then uh, and then export default back. So yep. Yep. I mean, there are many many ways of doing that. So I want to. So this is uh, that's rollup. Rollup is very very powerful. I mean, and it is so powerful and so easy to, uh, to understand w what it is doing, how it is doing. Um, I would I would re strongly recommend uh, that too. So this is the thing. The, the Svelte Rollup and Sapper, all three of them are created by the same person, uh, Rich Harris, who, by the yes. way, was a journalist, haha, <laughs> puts all of us developers to shame, really. Uh, the guy is so, so productive. He has created three major frameworks, probably more, right? These three are actually successful. Um, and all the while holding a journalist job at the New York Times and creating all these things. So anyway, I mean, he's quite impressive. So I would recommend you to um, just search, uh, search him on YouTube and look at some of his presentations. They're very impressive. One of them is called uh, Rethinking Reactivity. And another one is called uh, a a Computer Build Me an App. Both of them, highly recommended. Any case. So I am obviously very excited about Svelte. I think um, I use Svelte for all the applications where I have uh, the choice, which means uh, which means all of my internal applications as well as those where the client doesn't care what I use, because that saves me so much time and saves my client money and gives them better performance and makes it more uh, you know um, maintainable. Hey, Jitesh, uh, has there been any uh, published um, libraries, component libraries, like a, a, like a material uh, yes. library or anything? Yes, there is. So there is Svelte UI, there is uh, Smelt, which is Svelte Material UI. Uh, and there, are, there is Svelte Bootstrap. There are all kinds. I mean, yeah, there are plenty of Svelte. I mean, you, you can just Google it. It's all there. Um, yeah. There is, uh, there is a, a special router. So I, I mentioned uh, Sapper. Sapper is server-side and client-side router, like routing on both ends of it. But then there is a client-side only router called Routify. Again, I have videos on that. Um, so that one, it does almost everything that Sapper does on the server-side, but this one does completely on the client-side. It's very powerful. Um, in the end, the entire Swell community is focused on doing more with less code and um, and that uh, that's not just a i mean you, you you most people i mean if i had not seen Svelte, i would have thought of course that's silly why would anybody do uh, do write more code than they have to right but the thing this is it's always better yes but 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 the question is why are people writing some more code Others are those who are not using either they don't know about Svelte or they know, but their client is telling them to not write in Svelte. They want some Facebook big enterprise, big company behind it, you know, React and so on and so forth. Or, and I, and the, I, you know, I believe that humans are all good and all that. So I, I don't want to believe this, but 
but i have actually seen real evidence of people uh, uh, coding in react because they want to protect it gives them job security and it's like I the wish, expression hmm? yeah it's like the expression it's like uh, nobody ever got fired for uh, buying ibm mm -hmm. it's like uh, well, yeah yeah not just that the thing is uh, well but that might be the thinking of a, of a development manager yes but a developer is probably doing uh, some developers are doing react simply because they know a that's where the jobs are but also even if even if they got a chance to do things in swell versus react if if the client gave them a choice they might go with react simply thinking that hey if i do it in swell it's too easy to maintain and the next they can replace me with the next developer very easily while if i do it in react it's like 10 times more code which means more job more work for me yeah. so what about uh so i see spelt what obviously works with the with the dom is is there a mode of spelt that uh, works with without a dom is there a native you know like a a, a uh, you know i'm looking so at for instance like for, so as an example like uh with react uh, there's react native if you want to build native applications they even have i think like a, like a command line yeah they have a command line framework which i i don't know why you'd want to use react to write a command line but they have a framework for for doing that or it's based off of react yes yeah, so you're right so there is uh, a self native so for mobile app native mobile app so self native is basically all of these react native and view native self native all these are basically native script combined you know so and there are components for that so yeah i i've never used it so i don't really know mm. no i mean that 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 sounds promising um of course now i'm interested in svelte under electron you know what i mean uh yeah. i'm all about simplifying you know lines of code and simplifying code in general um but uh, yeah, uh, React has got me a little bit flummoxed relative to um, some of the things I need to jump through in order to do, um, you know, state management and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, you know, I love to see more observable type of patterns. I like the TypeScript. Uh, I'm a TypeScript fan, so I like that integration. Um, yeah, this is this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, thank you very feel free to go ahead. Sorry, I was just to say that. Thanks very much, Tatesh, for for doing the presentation tonight. I really appreciate yeah. it. Uh, so, yeah, I, once again, yeah. go to YouTube.com/spinspire, and there are all these videos. Watch them, or you can email me at jitesh@spinspire.com. I'll post a link to that uh, to the uh, meetup uh, uh, to the meetup uh, event for uh, for the tonight's meeting, so everybody has access to it. Yeah, and, and 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 trust me, if anybody gives you a hard time that oh, Svelte is okay for small applications, uh, send them to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you all. Oh, great job, Tish. All this. Thank you very much.